singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Check, check, one, two. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's installment of the Justin Moore Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in today. I'm your old buddy, old pal, Jay Hour, the handler, coming to you from South Alabama and across from the Zoom machine for me today on a beautiful sunny day in the South is uh, my brother, the old dirt road kid, uh, Thunderhead Fred himself, Mr. Justin Moore. How's Arkansas treating you today, Just? <laughs> It's good. Uh, it's good. It's like you said, it's beautiful, but my gosh, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but it has been so incredibly hot the last, oh, yeah. I don't know, week or something like that. I mean, Phew. like it's like normal June weather for, for the South. You walk outside and instantly you just start pouring, uh, you know, from the sweat. It's just, it's crazy. I've, I've been cleaning out my garages. Uh, I feel like I've done that a a hundred times since this uh pandemic hit us 15 16 months ago but it's like i don't know how i ever had time to do this stuff when we were on the road so it's crazy it's like yeah i know i did it but I'm, i don't know how you know because it seems like i'm so busy now yeah. and uh and we're getting back to work so I, i'll have to figure it back out which i'm thrilled about because i'm I tired of cleaning my damn garage yeah I'm in the same boat. My needs clean again now, and I've done it 10 times. But like you said, I know I used to get all this stuff done and be on the road. Now I can't even get this stuff done. It's like I tell people, I was like, it's every time I get one one or two things off the list of my of my to-do list, like three or four more things pop on it, and I just can't get it chopped down. And like you said, too, we're getting back out on the road, so I've been busy advancing shows, which not complaining, like you said, not complaining. Right. It definitely takes up a, a big chunk of time. So uh, this whole podcast and back-to-work thing is going to be a work in progress, like we mentioned last week. So uh, uh, yeah, I look forward to no the doubt. challenge, and uh, it, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something. But, uh, yeah, because I didn't uh, – I was telling you off air, you know, I've been outside working on the fence all week. I actually got into a little fender bender the other day after I talked with you. Uh, leaving the what? DMV, uh, rear ended, yes, rear ended a lady leaving the DMV in a in you know in a construction zone. Just you know, accident. Well, you can't just tell and, this uh, in passing. You got to tell this story. Yeah, yeah. No, so I'm, I'm on the I'm on the uh, expressway and it's uh it's going down to two <laughs> lanes. It's right after I talked to you. Uh, on South's birthday the other day, y'all were out, y'all left Dinosaur yeah, World, yeah. And I had just left the DMV, and I'm I'm trying to take the expressway to get home, you know, quicker because I think you know the, the 59. It's Friday, you know, it's two o'clock on a Friday. It's going to be tough getting down. Everybody going to the beach, so I was going to go the back way of the expressway. Well, there's construction, so we're going down to we're letting people in and out, in and out, and I'm looking back <laughs> and letting people in. We're all merging two lanes down to one and. I'm like looking and looking and letting in and letting out, and I look up and I'm getting close to this lady and I'm rolling pretty fast and I hit the gas, went to hit the brake and got a little gas before I got the brake and uh, got, got her pretty good. Yeah, wasn't too bad. Everybody's okay, but definitely uh, dinged up my license plate, broke one of my uh, uh, tow hooks off. Um, it was like it, it actually did exactly what it should have done. Our bumpers hit. And they took the impact. The only thing it did it in her door of her minivan because the front of my truck was, you know, sticking out a hair farther right. than my bumper. But our, but our, we weren't going but ten miles an hour, you know, tops. We weren't going very fast. Right. Uh, but it was enough to break that bolt off. And <laughs> stuck. And anyway, I had, I had to call Foley PD to come help out, make sure we had all the info straight. So I'm sure oh, I've never man. had a wreck too. Everybody I've really? talked to is like, don't worry about it. You know, it happens. No, no, dude, I've had like one, two speeding tickets ever, and that was 20-something years ago. That was when I was a wow. kid. I had never. I've had, knock on wood, I, I've i just been lucky and safe. And, I, you know, you know me, I drive really safe. I, I always say yeah. old people drive slow because they drove old, and they're old because they drove <laughs> slow. There's no reason. I, I'm not a speed demon. I don't ride motorcycles. I don't. I yeah, we, we that. share so, that uh, same kind of uh yeah, uh, yeah. Thought process, I guess. Uh, you know, I drive pretty slow. I mean, if we're going yeah. on a long trip, say we're driving to the beach and it's 10 hours, like I'll set my cruise like five, six miles an hour over on the interstate, something like that. But Exactly. But around, yeah, yeah. But around here, I literally will just set yeah. my cruise control on the speed limit because I'm like, I ain't in a hurry, right. whatever. I mean, I, I don't, yeah, don't want to deal with tickets. I've had maybe two or three tickets my whole life, knock on wood. <sighs> But where I differ from you, I have had uh, a few wrecks. 
Uh, one was in high school. I told my dad's truck. It was wet. I really wasn't driving that fast, but it was a windy, curvy road. and That one could have been bad, bad. Um, it oh, was, yeah. Uh, There's a lot of those around where you live, too. Every yeah. time I ride home with you guys, <laughs> you go yeah. way I – mean, you're going the speed limit. To me, it seems like we're flying. Right. Same as if we're back yeah. home where I'm from and you know the curves. Right. You know, yeah, you, you go. Can, but Yeah. So – Add something in the road or a little moisture on the road, it doesn't take a whole lot to but get I squirrely. Will say, I get it. I did, uh, this was probably three, four, five years ago now, something like that. I did kind of the same exact thing you're explaining on your little fender bender. You'll probably remember, but I left getting my hair cut, um, and there's a stop sign maybe maybe a half a mile from where i get my hair cut and then you pull off into another road and off onto the interstate or whatever so i don't even know how it happened i thought this car was gonna this car was sitting at the stop sign for some reason in my mind i thought they were gonna go and so i just i guess i just kept rolling and I just smashed right yep. back in the back. It was pr probably <laughs> seven miles an hour or something, kind of like you. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And so, uh, fortunately, the guy who I hit was, like, super nice guy. He wasn't, like, mad yeah. at me. I mean, because that, that's the worst. Because you already feel like a dumbass. Yes. When you just rear in oh, somebody, you feel like the scum oh. of the earth. Big I mean, time. it's an accident. Big time. And you Clearly know Clearly, you didn't want it. Yeah. So, this guy kind of initially was a little perturbed at me, which I yeah. really, I don't blame him. <sighs> He's like, well, I got to get back to work, man. I, I go, I promise you this is not how I wanted to spend my afternoon either, man. I said, I'm right, so sorry. Right. It was clearly an accident. I, I This is a pain in my ass also. I mean, right. you know. yes. And yes. finally, he, he got really cool and we just sat there and talked because yeah. it took a while for the cops to come out but i have a buddy who's a, a little rock police officer and because the wait time to get an officer out for something that wasn't like life-threatening or something like that you know because they're 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 crazy understaffed oh yeah i mean yeah, and i'm assuming out. it's the same way everywhere um but yeah I said, man, can you help me out here by getting somebody out? And he's like, man, we just don't have anybody. And they have to come out, he was telling me, with, with backup, even though it's nothing. But they don't know. They do that right, to, yeah. like, to keep themselves safe. Right. Another guy came, too, and he waved him right. off. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, uh, finally they came out, and, and one of the cops was a lady having to be a fan of mine and i was like i feel like a complete idiot you know like sorry and yeah and she's like she she had to write me a ticket because it was clearly my fault and i was like yeah absolutely whatever you got to do i'm just yeah whatever let's handle this the way it should be handled i thank y'all for yeah you know coming out here and all you know i feel terrible right. for the guy and I think he happened to be a teacher, which was pretty neat. He had a really neat story. He was from a different country or something. Um, but anyway, um, wow. she was writing the ticket, and she's because she's a big fan. She's like, "I am so sorry. I like, I'll get fired." I'm like, "No, just write me the ticket. It's totally fine." Yeah, yeah like, please, let's just yeah, do it right. Yeah. So I don't know, but anyway, I guess all, all that being said, that's the first wreck I had where I was at fault and rear-ended somebody, and I felt like a complete and utter failure in life i mean just oh I've, i'm still i'm still failing I'm, I'm an emotional i'm an emotional wreck right was now, sharice you know with you too. no i was solo i was trying to meet them to go have late lunch i was starving oh yeah just terrible situation so, uh but lady couldn't have been nicer see that helps. lady could not have been nicer could not have <laughs> oh my god are you kidding me and she hit the lady in front of her the lady in front of her gets out looks at her car and says i don't even have a scratch i got to go to work and left wow and but we're on the expressway when two lanes are going down to one so everybody's just creeping by and half the time people are just stopped right beside us and i'm thinking at any point some of my buddies or somebody i know is gonna make me over there on the road you know be like, hey you know and i'm thank goodness not so did you get uh, a ticket because i'm trying i'm just i did not we just got two we just we just swapped wow. info that was basically it yeah, for you. That was, that was yeah, it. Um, yeah, yeah, but it was it was. I mean, it's she. I mean, you know, like I said, she, it it looked really bad, but both vehicles were fine. Nobody was hurt. It was the whole thing, and uh, it took them a little while. So her, her and I sat there and talked, and we realized there's a 
the airplanes kept flying, like taking off and circling right there. So that was only that was the most thing we after we got the information swap, we wanted to ask the officer, we're like, what? Are, why are these airplanes flying? What's well, a naval training center right over there near Oa? So if you ever if you're ever down in South Alabama and Baldwin County at Oa, the big amusement park they've got there. Um, and you see a bunch of planes taking off one after another. We're not going to war with anybody. That's just naval training. Well, that's so, that's uh, awesome that she was cool because that, that can just make it oh, even you have been ten sweeter. times worse. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, like I said with my deal, it's like, it's not like you. She even told me she's like, I know you didn't mean to do that. I was like, no, ma'am, well, I definitely did not. It's not like you wanted to spend your afternoon doing that either. You was trying to go get some grub, man. Oh, man. Dude, just crushed me. I, and I just told myself two turns before that day was going really good. That was after I told you got hit up uh, go, about going maybe later this fall to check out the facilities at the University of Alabama. Just got my new driver's license. Got my star so we can go yep. fly. Got my star ID done. Got all kinds of stuff done. I had a great conversation at the DMV with the guy about different t- stuff I needed to know. Uh, and then telling myself, don't get too comfortable. Something bad live will happen. <laughs> I mean, five minutes later. I mean, uh, five minutes later. It just that's just that's just how my my stuff rolls, man. And the irony of comfy. you doing it after leaving the DMV. DMV, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, oh, that's funny, unbelievable. But, well, I'm glad everybody's but okay. Anyway, well, hey, before, yeah, that was the main thing for sure, for sure. Well, hey, we got a great guest coming up, dude. One yeah. of my buddies I've known for a long time. One of my favorite songwriters. Uh, just all around dudes, just a cool cat. Mr. Brent Cobb's going to jump on here with us a minute uh, on the Zoom machine. He's doing some writing today, I think, um, but he's going to jump on and uh, chop it up with us for a little while. But but before we get to Brent, though, I want to say thanks to Jared Johnston for coming yeah, on last sure. week and talking some talking music with us for a little bit as they get to take off. I saw his Insta this weekend, like they were rocking again, having a good time. So, yeah, I wonder uh, how it went. I know to him for jumping I know on he, last week. Uh, he said uh, rehearsal didn't go too well on his behalf, so I, was, I wonder how the shows went. We'll have to, like, like we talked about last week, we'll have to get him and the guys back on and check in on how they're, how they're making yeah. it out there, how it felt to be back on for stage. Sure. I, yeah, I don't even think anybody cares right now. I think everybody's just so ready to go do stuff. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Oh, I know. You know. They're just like, we're going to go yeah. rock, you know. I'm sure they've been in there because, uh, yeah, I did see some of them. But, yeah, that's uh, that. thank him for coming on last week. Uh, I guess we want to take a real quick pause for the calls and uh, uh, do our uh, station identification break here for our wonderful sponsors and advertisers and then uh, come back with Brent. Awesome. All right, everybody, stay tuned. We'll be right back here shortly on the Justin Moore Podcast. Hey guys, I'm so excited to announce an awesome opportunity with one of our sponsors, Bobcat Company. Today we're announcing the Straight Out of the Country giveaway where you can enter to win one of three pieces of Bobcat equipment. They're giving away a Bobcat compact tractor, a Bobcat zero turn mower, and a Bobcat utility vehicle. The utility vehicle, also known as a UTV, is one that I've been using on my tour and I can tell you It's a great machine and one you would be so lucky to take home. To learn more about the giveaway and to submit your entry, go to bobcat.com slash country. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic benton arkansas Uh, again that's 119 west south street in benton arkansas and if you're not local we ship everywhere so uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife kate has to offer i should say facebook you can find us at shop this little piggy ar and instagram you can find us at shop this little piggy ar but check us out it's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. I am dialing in on the Zoom machine now. To my brother from Georgia, his audio is connecting. I let's see him. He looks good. If he sounds half as good hey. as he looks, we're gonna be all right, hey, ladies buddy. and gentlemen. There he is. What's up, Brent Cobb? I, How are you, brother? Am I in there? I'm hanging in there. What you know, good. 
Oh man, you and Justin Moore right now. Yeah, glad <laughs> What's to be up? here. Thank y'all. What's for up? Yes, Brent. How you doing, man? Man, doing all right. Just uh, just got done with the first right of the day. And it's now nice. It sounds like you're working a little harder than me. <laughs> it's Monday. <laughs> there you go. Time to get after. Man, I was I, I live, was talking. I live I live in Georgia, and and uh, we moved back to Georgia a couple of years ago. So when I come up here, they they put it on my calendar. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I was uh, telling Jr. earlier. I couldn't remember if you and I had met or not. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, it's been ten years ago, probably. I opened up. The only time I think that we've ever, other other than one time, I was writing with uh, Tyler uh, Travis Denning. Okay. And uh, but before that, ten years ago, I opened for you at the Texas Club in Baton Rouge. Yep. It's a place. And, uh, it's the type was, of place they still was, let you smoke. Yeah, do they still? <laughs> so even I, now, you I think? don't know. I haven't been there in a while, but uh, they used to, buddy. It used to be one of those Back for then. sure enough smoky bars. Uh, when when we both there are started. still there yeah. are still uh, smoke. You can still smoke at some bars in Louisiana. I know that for a fact. I know the bar in Homa that everybody goes to, Canal Bar. You can smoke cigs. I don't know about the big clubs anymore. Louisiana yeah. ain't changed much. No, uh, not not uh, at all. Back in time when you go down there. So man, we man, we, no. we both married girls from down there, so we we get our fill of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how crazy is that? I never even told you that, Cobb. Yeah, so I met my wife ten years ago. Just been married to his about fifteen or sixteen now, probably. Um, like how many just uh, i put four, you on the spot 14? yeah in there somewhere 14 so anyway and then so i you know and y'all talking about the texas club that's before my time working for justin i was with party then yep. and i remember me and you met the first time uh at the rock the south in coleman uh we would parties van and trailer days you were out there that was no beard short hair mm -hmm. and uh, you had the trucker hat on and we sat out there and talked by the van yeah, we, an we, hour we probably met before that when you was out with wayne mills man was that the first time we met? I think that's the first time we met because I was with Wayne, and then once Wayne and I, I was, I went on and did other stuff, and Wayne was doing stuff. We'd only sporadically hook up there, and that's where he met a lot of cats. Uh, we met the same cats, but not we. Me and him wasn't together a whole lot during that point. Yeah, well, I, uh, I but, think me. But and we might have. But hell, I was I was pretty in the bag a lot back then too. So we liable have met, and I just don't remember. <laughs> I had a good a good old time back in them days. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, man, I just want to say thank South, you for I doing we this. Talked for, oh. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, I think we have a little bit of a we. I think we have a little bit of a delay. It could be my internet. I can try to swap. You, if well, need be. I'm, I'm connected. To, you, do you want me to try to disconnect and come back and see if it works better? I, I think you're good. I mean, I'm getting you good, Just. Are you? Am I lagging a little bit to you? I just feel like I keep talking over everybody, but I don't know if that's me. Am I fine to you? Yeah, you seem to be. You were a little shaky earlier, okay. but it seems fine I think now. it's just 2021. <laughs> yeah. Right. It never is. Yeah. It didn't start off a lot better than 2020. Yeah. No doubt. And we're notorious for having the worst uh, internet and uh, connectivity and computer problems on the planet. Right. So uh, that's pretty well, – this will be the least professional thing you do all week while you're I had town, to come sure. all the way to Nashville so I could get good Wi-Fi. <laughs> we don't have no good Wi-Fi in Cobb, Georgia. <laughs> I know the feeling, my man. It's a, so anyway, what I was going to say, man, is I was just going to say, uh, I know you got a, a thousand different things you could be doing right now. I appreciate you doing this. And just to give you a little bit of background on what, what the hell we're even doing. When we got shut down, you know, 15, 16 months ago or something like that, I was just trying to figure out anything to do to get out of my wife, uh, get out of her hair for one. And I, to do something, even if it was not successful, just to do something that I felt like I was working or something. You know, I, I just felt like I, I can only clean my garage so many times and I can only bush hog so many times and do this and do yep. that. And I thought, man, I got to do something that at least keeps me uh, accountable and and. And obligated and creative to do something and we just said hey we'll just do this and jr and i are great friends and obviously work together and we said man we'll just start talking to all our buddies it'll be be a way to keep up and maybe give some of the fans a little inside baseball and um and it, it's kind of it's been a lot of fun for us and and we appreciate guys like yourself who who have i don't know why but you say yeah and come on here and we just 
Honestly, we just we just bullshit. So it's uh, well, I'm I'm real good. I ain't good at many things, but I'm a good bullshitter. <laughs> I can write songs okay, and I I you know as Troy Jones, the the late great Troy Jones said, I'm pretty good at drinking beer. So <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. So you yeah. you've mentioned a couple of times being being from Georgia and still living in Georgia. That's kind of the same path that I took. I'm I did move to Nashville in 02 uh and lived there for i don't know between nine and ten years and but it was always my goal to to go back home i never really wanted to become a part of the machine and same do that whole thing and it kind of seems like like you just said it kind of seems like you're kind of in the same mindset if you will yeah i uh i never planned to leave georgia i'm from ellaville georgia about three hours south of atlanta uh, south, uh, southwest central Georgia, about an hour from Macon. And uh, growing up, I never had any ambition to ever. I wasn't one of them that was like, oh, I hate this little small town. I want to get out of it. I, I always loved it. And, uh, you know, I love riding the dirt roads and, and going to the crawfish hole on, on in the springtime and, and just the whole life. You know, my daddy was in a band, and, and but also owned his own appliance repair business. So I'd work with him during the weeks and when I graduated high school and I was in tech school and just had no ambition to, to leave. I didn't care to. And, and then, uh, I met a distant relative of mine, a cousin of mine named Dave Cobb that at a funeral, his grandmother had passed away. My great aunt Christine. And, uh, and you know, when you're from one of them little small towns like that, you kind of get skeptical of, people that come in that you had never met before and uh and my family were all real musical and we heard that this cousin of ours was a big time record producer in la and uh and so after his grandmother's funeral we're all standing out there i'm only 17 or 18 at the time this is oh four oh five and uh i go we're all standing around i say man i hear you're a big record producer what have you produced and at the time, he said, well, I've done this, I've done that, and I've done uh, this this album called Put the O Back in Country by Shooter Jennings. And when he said that, man, I was like, whoa, you know, it kind of blew my hair back. And uh, shamelessly, I gave him a little six-song acoustic demo that I had come up, and uh, I have my mama's brother, my other uncle, his name is also Dave, David Rigney, when I was 16, he had let me come up and record at his little basement studio. And so I did six songs, acoustic of these songs I had written. And so I gave Dave Cobb that little demo, and then he didn't want to listen to it. He was like, you know, met, he meets his little young-ass cousin at a funeral. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, right. that's my demo. And, uh, yeah. and a couple of days later, he, uh, he called me. I had just, I was working for a tree service crew, Herod Tree Service at the time, and I'd just gotten off work. I was still living at my folks' house, and the house phone rang. I didn't have a cell phone or anything. And uh, he, I answered the phone, and me and my buddy had just gotten super stoned, and uh, who I worked <laughs> with. And so I, I answered the phone, and I go, Hello. He goes, Hey, is Brent there? And I said, This is Brent. He said, Well, uh, this is your cousin, Dave. We met at my my grandma's funeral and uh i got shooter jennings sitting on the phone with me we want to fly you out to la and record a record and uh I, my little high young ass looked at my buddy at the, at the kitchen table he's sitting at my mama's kitchen table and i was going <laughs> yeah like half like a scene out of half baked <laughs> totally and so that's how i left georgia i would have never left had it not been that moment right there and that's sort of what what started it all and uh i went back and forth i still the whole i didn't want to move to definitely didn't want to move to la and um uh, i started going back and forth for about a year and a half and then i i moved out there for four months and there was a, a drive-by shooting a dude tried to carjack me there was an earthquake and it only rained one time in those four months and so I said, the hell with this, I'm moving back to, to South Georgia. And uh, I went back down there. And in the meantime, you know how you do, I was playing with local bands down there and, and uh, come across, we opened a show for Luke, Brian, our old buddy. And uh, 
he got a hold of that album that I made out there with Shooter and Dave, and and then he was telling me, man, you should just move to Nashville. And so I moved here in March of 08, and I lived here till my daughter was born in 2014, and I didn't tour for a couple of years and started back touring in 2016, and then we moved back to Georgia in 2018. So now there's the whole I think, story. I guess we can call, the, we can call it a day now. I, the circle goes I, I think, unbroken. I love it. JR, I think he just explained my entire career, at life, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. was it, almost yeah. to a T, except I didn't have a, uh, a cousin that I met. Uh, but outside of that, you had, you had Uncle James. Yeah, I had a, I had I had Drunkle James. Um, you had Drunkle James. Drunkle James. What's, who's that? What's Drunkle he, James? So he he always played music grow when I was growing up, and still does, uh, and mostly in a southern rock band. And so that was the first experience his, I got playing live. His mama's brother. Yes, my mom's brother. So that was my first. You know, we I get up at. 16, 17 year old in a Moose Lodge or VFW club or something, yep. saying cocaine, uh, simple yep. man, uh, <laughs> Damn you know, right. all that kind of stuff. And But you almost, again, you almost describe me to a T because all my buddies, for the most part, back home that I was growing up with, uh, they were going, I can't wait to get the hell out of Dodge and, you know, all this. And I was right. like, I don't know. I, am I crazy? I kind of like it here. I, I, you know, whatever. Kind of like you, you were explaining. I never wanted to leave. Hell, I was the only one that did. Uh, but I, but I came back, Same. and I, and I moved back here when my first daughter was born, which is you just said you, you did the same. So that was so I guess how, eleven how long, eleven years ago now for me. How long were, did you actually live in Nashville? So I lived there almost ten years. And then I've been back here uh, eleven ish, something like that. So, wow, um, man! Yeah, I moved there in '02, so I could be off a year or two oh. here or there. But, but yeah, I, you know, it was just always I never bought a house there. I, I never right. wanted to plant roots there. My wife liked it. Um, and and look, Nashville is really good to me, and I have great relationships and friends oh. there. Obviously, just like yourself, I'm sure. Same. But it just wasn't home, man. And and you know as well as I do, as an artist, when you're and I've said this on this podcast a hundred times, but when you're off as an artist, um, is the only time you're really in Nashville, unless you're writing a record or you're produ- or right. you're, you're producing one or you're recording one, whatever. Um, and so I kept coming home on Sundays from the road and it was just me and my wife and my newborn baby at the time. And I'm going, why ain't we at like my grandma's house and, eating dinner? And, and, uh, or right. You know, whatever. Same man. I was the same so, way. I, the, I, I'm glad I did it because what you just said, I met some of the best friends that I'll have my whole life. Uh, and I'm grateful for right. that, but I was the same way when I'd get off the road and I'd come here to Nashville, it was like, what the hell am I doing here? I don't want to be here. I want to be like you just said, man. You we were just waiting Grandma's to go back on the road. I, well, I just wanted to be, when I was off, I wanted to be off. I wanted to be home, man. I wanted to go down to, to right. the Kinshafuna Creek and throw a basket in the water, you know, or like Grandma's. We'd go the same deal. We'd go to Grandma's after church every Sunday, and we'd jump on the four-wheelers, and we would ride till the damn sun went down, you know. And there was none of that here. And so I was going, I don't want my daughter to grow up in the, you know, I love Nashville too for other reasons, but I didn't want her to grow up in a concrete jungle. You know, I want her to grow up like I grew mm. up, you know. Yep. And uh, Did we just yeah, become best friends? We Are we best yeah. friends right now? <laughs> I don't know. Right. Man. Yeah, Justin used to always say, he said, I want my daughters to pick blackberries off the same fence Damn that I picked with my grandma. I want them to pick where grandma. And Justin has a cool story, too. When he got back home, when Ella started first grade, her first grade teacher was Justin's first grade teacher. Yep. Wow, dude. Yep. That's my so it, my daughter. When we moved back home, she went to the same preschool at, at the college that I went to growing up and uh, and and played on the same. They, they It probably isn't uh, safe, but they played on the same – playground you know little same, tunnels and stuff you know same stuff that was there when you were there oh <laughs> hell, buddy. oh 
There you go. See, you know what I mean? No, I'm good. Take it. <laughs> oh, Benny Burgess over there. We just wrote us a song while ago. Was it a hit? I know y'all did. Were you? Uh, well, it's called Pancakes and Sunshine. Hey, if that's it to Luke, hey, if, I, if that I, don't make you happy, I don't know what will. Hey, I love titles that make me. Uh, I've cut, re- I've or I've listened to songs that otherwise maybe I wouldn't have, simply because I, when you used to have CDs, I would get them and go. I would read the titles before anything else and go. Make, I was interested I'm to see if to anything that. popped off the, the the page at me. You know what I mean and. Pancakes and sunshine would definitely do that to me. I would have to listen to it. Yeah, exactly. And and so. I think the song we just wrote it sounds exactly like you would imagine. Pancakes and sunshine sound. <laughs> I love. We're, it. Only time will tell. Um. Well, hey, talking about writing, uh, Cobb. I, I want to hit a few points while we got you time here today. And I know talking about writing, we had a guest on a few weeks ago, Mr. Travis Tritt. And I know you and brother. Uh, Hood and uh, Channing and some of you guys all went over there and wrote with uh, Travis. I know I, mean, I talked to you or Ben or some of y'all about the time y'all were heading over there, or Adam or somebody, and um, I just want to hear what you got on that. How was that going out and writing with Travis during the, that was during the pandemic too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, we. Uh, well, you know, I got Ben over here working at Carnival now, and uh, yep. I, me and Ben, he tour managed me and just been a best friend for a long time, many years, ten years probably, and uh, yep. And I got him on over here plugging. He's never done that, but he's a Ben's the type of dude that just gonna make it happen. He's gonna make whatever it is happen, you know. And uh, yep. he got hooked up. Obviously, Dave did that record, but Ben was the reason why I got on that that co write with Travis. And uh, man, I mean, he's South Georgia dude, and you know, obviously, I grew up my whole life listening to him and my dad was a musician and an appliance repairman which is also what travis tritt was he was an appliance repairman before so there was always a deep personal connection and uh man i went up there to his house and i was kind of you know just to be completely candid i was a little hesitant of it because i had heard that travis could be a bit of an arrogant asshole honestly and, yeah, but, be a but, handful but you sure. hear that about folks, you know, and, yep. and I should know better than to believe what you hear. And, uh, but I went on anyway, and that dude was the sweetest dude I have ever hung out with. He was the nicest, warmest, welcoming person I've ever hung out with. And, uh, we wrote at his spot, speaking of never leaving your hometown, he's never moved here. He's always lived in Georgia. Yep. And, uh, just listening to him tell him old stories, man. And, and he, you know, he said he had a suitcase that had a uh, drift off the dream and, uh, oh. uh, 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 any more in the same suitcase when he came to town and he was shopping these songs and, uh, and he had everybody telling him, you know, you need to do this and you don't need to do that. And he was going, I, I'm the one actually in the honky tonks. I know yeah. what the crowd wants to hear because I'm there yeah. every damn weekend. And uh, he always stuck to his guns. But we went in and uh, I had a a song come to me. I dreamed it the, about the week before I went in that I woke up with the whole melody and the chord structure of this chorus that, that went uh, uh, set in stone was the name of the song. And, and it's all, you know, it's, it's just Travis, man. It's, and it's anybody, it's anybody who believes in what to do and, and who, who, uh, ha- has been doing whatever it is they do and caring about what to do their whole life. It's, you know, morning sun up and gone, Lord shine your light on the working man's home and, uh, about your legacy. And so when I went right. in that day, I, I played him that one and, and I just told him, I was like, man, I, I just think as a fan of yours, if people heard you do something like this, you don't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. You know, you're a damn legend. And right. we, we wrote the shit out of it. And, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to get three or four more on there that we wrote together. And, uh, yeah, great dude. It was an awesome yeah. experience. I hope to do it again. 
Yeah, he came, when we had him on, same thing. Couldn't have been cooler and nicer. And, you know, like you said, you hear stuff about people you just never know. You, I mean, and most of the time it's not true. It ain't true. Uh, yeah. It never is. I mean, re- re- very rarely, very mm-hmm. rarely. But, yeah, I bet that was yeah, a trip, man. And, and you got to do it with your buddies, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there have what been so many – There, I was going to say, there's so many examples in my life where I go into situations or conversations or whatever and I go – you know, I have something in in my mind that's kind of predetermined or, or whatever. And, um, you know, people, if, if you go into things with an open mind, I've learned, uh, you know, people can surprise you in a good way. Obviously in a bad way also, but uh, he couldn't yeah. have been, like you said, he couldn't have been nicer, kinder, more generous with his time with us. I mean, and quite honestly, I mean, we've had a bunch of our buddies on here and we've had – hell, we had Matthew McConaughey. Um, just speaking <laughs> of stars, you know, and I'm like, I don't think yeah. I've ever been as nervous as I was to have Travis Tripp just because I was such a huge fan of his. So I can't imagine sitting yeah. at his his place writing a song for him or, or, or presenting an idea or, <laughs> you know, whatever. I would, and he was so sure outlawed too. So he many, wasn't like accessible and stuff. Yeah, he he was it was crazy to sit in that room with all of his he got all his posters and records on the walls and, <laughs> and, and you going, is this the same damn dude? Yeah. You yeah. know, like yeah, yeah. why is he why you, you you go like why why does he care to write with me or why does he care to be on this podcast? You know, it's damn Travis Trent. He's down. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what exactly. we said. We're like, who well, tricked the, him into this? I mean, what does he think he's going to do today? Because I don't know if he signed up for this. Yeah. Well, the, the difference in this podcast and writing with you, making those two decisions is is um, you've proven, man. Uh, and I'm a big fan of yours. Just just side note, but um, I'm a thanks, uh, Justin. You've proven how incredible of a songwriter and singer you are. So I think. That was maybe a little easier decision than, than spending yeah, right. an hour and a yeah. half with <laughs> us two. Whatever. Yeah. We got to get a couple Grammy nods for a podcast uh, holding yeah. up with Cobb. Yeah. You know how much them Grammy nods pay? <laughs> that's what we say about them award shows. Hell, that's a day off. Uh, they don't pay us to go no way. Uh, man, speaking of, and, you know, whatever, I don't want to weird you out, Justin, but congratulations on the record too, man. It's uh, awesome. And – the uh, what's the the song you wrote with McGill Chase McGill? Uh, better than a, me, better than more me. than me. Is that name of it? More than me. More than me, man. Yep. I've known Chase. I don't know if you know, but he played banjo with me for like five years. Wow. And uh, no, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. Yeah, we we wrote a uh, we wrote a song called Don't It that. It was he didn't have a publishing deal, and Kenny Chesney wound up recording it. And then uh, it wasn't long after that that Joker got him a publishing deal, and he he went ahead and quit the band. And uh, <laughs> he's been writing <laughs> hits ever since. Yeah, he'd sleep in his own bed you being know, a songwriter. Hell yeah, man! I tell you what, there's not a better human being that I've met in this business uh, than Chase and. You talk about talent with no that Joker right there. He, he and I wrote, co-wrote um, a lot of stuff off my previous album, and then he had, you know, I know it at least that one, if not more, on this album. And my next album, he'll have a bunch on too. He's just he's super talented, and uh, that doesn't surprise me that he played in your band because he's a really good musician. I, no doubt about it. If he's in a room with me and. Uh, usually the the same cast of characters that I write with, he's going to easily be the best guitar player <laughs> in the room. Totally. totally. Yeah. That, that dude, uh, he <laughs> called me. He, when, when when he had the uh, Sunrise, Sunburn, and Sunset Luke song, when they after yeah. that, that went big, you know, and he was out partying and celebrating, he called me and, he said, man, I just want to, I just want to call and tell you, thank you, man. I, I wouldn't be writing what I'm, way i'm writing if it wasn't for you and i said motherfucker i know 
<laughs> he said, he, he said, okay, then. <laughs> All right, bye. Yeah. All right, see you then, man. Uh, he's, You're welcome. He's a wonderful human being. Yeah, he's a, he's, I'm, I'm proud to know him. He's a good dude. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah no he's doubt. I've guy. only met him a handful of times, but every time I've been around him, yeah, it's super nice. He's Mississippi cat. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, both y'all had good records recently, man. Keep them on their toes. Another solid record, BC, as always. Yeah, Justin had a good, solid, strong country record come out. Man, I've been jamming both of them a lot. And, you know, talking about that, I got to bring this up while we're on here at some point. Might as well do it now. One of the songs off off the Grammy-nominated album, Providence Canyon, you wrote a song about our late great friend we alluded to earlier, Mr. Wayne Mills. Uh, you and Hood wrote uh, King of Alabama for Wayne, which I, I remember hearing a rough cut of it. And, man, I'm – I'm forever grateful for y'all for doing that for W because that that couldn't have been any better. You know, it's funny though. It's funny though uh, that you know we. It's King of Alabama's about Wayne, but Wayne and I used to always call Tony Brook the King of Alabama. I know. We, well, that's, that's you know that's part of why. So when all that went down with Wayne, uh, Adam Hood, he he used to when he would imitate Wayne, he'd go. I'm the king of Alabama road, Tad. I'm the Wayne Mills, the king of Alabama. And, uh, and, but everybody called Tony Brook the king of Alabama. But the reason yeah. I, I called it was because of the way Hood used to say it. And, uh, you know, when all that went down, my, my wife was pregnant with our first child, our daughter. And uh, she was just a little baby. Or no, she was pregnant. And, and I was thinking about her being a little baby. And, and if, some crazy shit happened to me and I got taken out of this world, you know, it, his son, Jack was seven when that happened. And it just really hit me profoundly. And, uh, and so I wanted to write a song really for Jack that was going, Hey, this is who your daddy was, you know? And, uh, and then when I got a hold of hood to finish it with me, we got done writing it. And I was like, man, I wonder, you know, we wouldn't have wrote this song had it not been for Jack. And I, I think we maybe we should add him as a co-writer to this song. And so I got a hold of, of Carol, Wayne's widow, and uh, sent her the song and let it, you know, told her what I was thinking and to let me know what she thought of the song and, and she loved it. And so we were able to add Jack as a third co-writer to that wow. to the King of Alabama. So awesome, so awesome, uh, man. Yeah, that dude's killing it now. By the way, he's oh yeah, he's fourteen oh, yeah. and he is playing the fire out of a guitar. Oh yeah, wow. he and Carol are actually coming down here today uh, to do their their yearly week down here at Gulf Shore or Orange Beach, the floor of Bama. Jason Parker texted me a couple of days ago. I think River Band, uh, River Dan Band's gonna try to get him up and play with him some while he's down here. Uh, yeah, he's so good, man, and tall and just a nice kid, man. I, I got to hang with him some last time they were down. Just yeah. couldn't be prouder of him. And then, you know, we got while we're on that too. You know, he he poor Jack double whammy with Rowdy. Yeah. I mean, his mentor and dear uh -huh. friend of all of ours, Rowdy Jason Cope. Yeah. I mean, getting taken out you know way too soon yeah, and uh, so just a double and he had been working with jack but then the Steelwoods and those guys Wes and all them keeping jack involved yeah. and man i think that's gonna really Amazing. blossom into something that's, cool so when i was going out to la rowdy was who i'd stay with out there that was okay. he, he was my mentor as well you know and wow uh, and so did you see that video clip of the other night when jack was playing rowdy's guitar and he and he and he does the note the boom, he bends the note, you know. Did the rowdy lick? Yeah, dude. And uh, man, I I just I tried to get Rowdy originally to write King of Alabama with it, and yeah. he was so close to all of that and Wayne, and, and he just couldn't do it. And uh, which is just crazy because when the last time me and Rowdy talked, I was on the way up to make a gospel album. I just recorded a gospel album, and. I was telling him about that. And he was talking about the Steelwoods new album. And he said that his, in Rowdy's mind, the whole big story was that Wayne's son, Jack, is a part of this record and playing on the record. And that was what the story was going to be. Well, nobody knew that Rowdy was going to die, you know. And so right. when they were going through all that, you know, that first couple of weeks, uh, I remember talking to their manager, Derek, and, and saying – you know, they're looking for 
somebody to fill in mm-hmm. those shoes. And I was like, man, I know it ain't the time now, but some damn day, Jack yep. Mills is going to be the man. He's going to have a lot. To say. He's the only person that ever learned directly from Rowdy wow. how yep. to play guitar. You know? He's gonna be his own. He's gonna be a, 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 a his own version of like a Derek Trucks kind of cat that Ain't comes no up in, through the ranks. He's he's got the lineage, he's got the bloodline. Yep. And Wayne wasn't no slinger. Now I, I got on that. Wayne was not a player. He oh. was he was about like you, just uh, he, he like could do enough to yeah get, enough to get a song wrote or play through some Bocephus and stuff. But he wasn't no super. But Jack can skin it Jack already. Can get down. Yep. I mean already. Mm-hmm. So Rowdy got to put the touch on him, and and yep. he's. He's gonna be a tall strapping kid. So yeah, that that's awesome. But yeah, I want to appreciate y'all from all of our family and uh, you know, for y'all doing that for him back then. That was a crazy time, man. And I think hell, I'm still shook about it. I think Sorry. about it every day, every, every show I, we ever do when we're in front of a crowd. I, I got a uh, sketch, a pencil sketch of, of Wayne. You've probably seen it with the hat on. And in, oh, yeah. in the bus, when we're in a bus, we we always have it posted in, in on the wall in there, you know. Wow. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. It was uh, it was uh, way too soon, but uh, we all gonna keep his memory going for for all our fallen brothers. You know, it's all we can do, and um, that's what we'll do. So, but anyway, hey, it's talking about that because who you wrote it with? We got to talk about him while we're here. Our brother Adam Hood for a second, which uh, just now always jam. We always like that duet him and Sonny did. Uh, the countryest. We played out on the bus. Yeah, dude. Ain't, ain't we the countryest? You know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but you, I know you and him did that, and while talking about doing records, I hear a little bird. He told me he got a new record in the can that that you produced, and you and you enlisted the help of some of your other Georgia rock and roll Southern rock brothers to uh, to put it all together. Yeah, um, well, I know how much on that I can talk about. I, well, I I really lucked up, you know. I, I've known Hood for ten years. He was writing at Carnival when I first got over here, and uh, we just cut from the same cloth. I walked in the first day I met him, and he said he was from Opelika, Alabama. I said, shit, we probably can't. And <laughs> so we, we got to writing and, uh, and we've just been writing forever. And I just love him. I'm just a big fan of him. And so when this album came up, I was saying, man, you ought to try to do this and you ought to go down this, you know, direction and you ought to do these songs. And he's like, man, why don't you just produce the thing? And, uh, I was right. Like, you got the vision. Why don't you just do yeah, it? Yeah. I said, I don't know, man. I've never done that. And uh, so, well, what happened is Ben wound up getting a hold of, obviously everybody was off during quarantine, nobody was touring. And uh, he got a hold of Blackberry Smokes Management and they had worked together through Drake White. And uh, and he put together the rhythm section of Blackberry Smoke and then I'm already down in Georgia. And so we booked Capricorn and Adam came in and we made a record at Capricorn with Blackberry Smoke being the rhythm section. And uh, it's so cool, man. And I told Adam the whole time that if it winds up good, it's because I'm just a fan. And if it winds up bad, it's because I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it wound up it wound up pretty good. I'm, I'm, oh, I don't see how it couldn't be, man. man with, probably, I can't wait for the first to hit. With the nucleus of, of you guys, uh, you and Adam and, and those guys, smoke guys i mean that's got to be <laughs> super super cool i can't wait to hear and it. Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, no doubt. yeah for sure yeah just the vibes in that room alone you know had to contribute its own thing for sure yeah what, uh, it's not, oh yeah i bet i imagine so i've never been in i don't think i've ever i've been by there but i've never been in the studio down there i think it was closed when i was down there i remember in uh in muscle shoals we used to go stay at one of the studios we had a buddy that lived out there at the jackson highway studio and hell we go out there and crash sometime in the van me and wayne all it was everything was like it used to be and they had their console in there was the old console out of capricorn oh, that they wow. had bought sometime way back when i guess because capricorn at some point was shut down for yeah, a long time the first time i went there was 2017 and it was I mean, dilapidated. You didn't want to really go in there. And uh, Mercer, the school bought uh, bought it, and then they they renovated it. They kept a lot of the original panels and stuff in there, and it's all a lot of it's original. And uh, but they've really done an amazing job. It's a it's a really nice studio now. Wow. 
Hey, yeah, Brent, I, Brent. I, I hopefully we go over and check it out at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Now, Brent, I was you. You mentioned your your daughter a few times. How many kids? You, I know you're kind of like me. Your your uh, your second job is music, and your first job is dad and and husband. How many kids you got? I have two: a six year old daughter and a two year old son. Okay. And uh, after after that second one, we shut that factory on down. So. <laughs> Lucky guy, he just smart man. Smart man. I, how many? How many y'all have? We have four. I so I have three daughters who are eleven, nine, and almost seven, and I have a little boy who Ooh. who just turned four. And so I, you know, the old joke is is so true uh, for me. I, I was good with three, and I was good with my girls. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything by not having a boy. I mean, if I had one, great. But I wanted three, and my wife wanted four, so we compromised and and had four, um, and had a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. So, but yeah. the factory is closed great. now. <laughs> like you, it's yeah. closed. We're all sh- so. we're all shutting down, so we can all retire one day. <laughs> hey. Cobb, tell us about the book. I got to talk about that while I got you here, too. Yeah, you're, speaking you're the, of kiddos. You're, you're the second. Yeah, you're the third, I think, third or fourth author we've had on the podcast so far, and you, I'm sure you'll be the bestseller at some point. Really? Is it, is it, are they all children book authors? No. I, you, I, th- I, believe, I don't know. McConaughey's kind of out there. He might have wrote a children's book Man, at some point. That, his but, his uh, book's good, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. The green, yeah green Lights. Green Lights. Yes, sir. Good one. Uh, Marty Smith, I know he's wrote a couple of real good – Bestseller books uh, from, e- from ESPN. We've had Marty on a few. Da- Dallas Page, yeah. Um, That's awesome. I, I think Kevin DeGondi's probably wrote, written a book or two. I'm sure several of the guests we've had over the years. I'm sure Tracy Lawrence has got one in the can. Yeah, no <laughs> <doubt>. <laughs> but anyway, as as our first children's author since Chell Silverstein was busy, um, tell us about how all that came to be. Is that part of being a dad? Because this is going to air, by the way. This is going to air as our Father's Day show. Oh, this man. will come out a few days before Father's Day. So this will be what everybody will be listening to Father's Day weekend and whatnot. It's well, kind of why we I, I talked to Ben about lining this up that way. I appreciate that. Well, it. Uh, I speaking of Shell Silverstein, I've always been, you know, I, I was born in 86. And so I grew up, we still had Schoolhouse Rock and, you know, Waylon, the Dukes of Hazard was still being played on TV, yep. and and uh, I always, as a kid, I thought it was cool, you know, like this old country singer, you know, doing stuff for kids, you know, it just always meant a lot to me, and uh, and it seemed like growing up in those days, music, especially country music, did go right along with with children learning and educational type stuff, just real world, down to earth things and uh so i was always attracted to that and then when my daughter was born every album i've made since then since 2016 which was the first album i made after she was born uh has always been directed towards if i were to die what would you know how what could i leave behind for my kids to know who daddy was and so um my man is one of person who works for my management, uh, Hannah Cole, she, she had, she came up to me and said, Hey, I know you're always talking about doing a, a children's book. What do you think about making one out of your song, little stuff off of keep them on their toes. And I was like, that's a genius idea. I should have thought of that. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, that's, why, that's why I hired you. <laughs> thanks. And, uh, yeah. and so, uh, initially I was going to write it and just use the, those lyrics and for each page. And I do incorporate the lyrics to the actual song on each page, but the more we talk to folks, we talk to a bunch of folks that have actual experience with that, uh, genre. And one of them was Coy Bowles of the Zach Brown band. He's put out about five or six children's books and he recommended that we try to, uh, translate the lyrics to words like sentences for six year olds. And so, uh, I did that and Hannah Cole helped a lot on that. And, uh, and we made a children's book. That's what happened. It's all told from the perspective of my daughter going out on a walk with me down to the river. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. And so is, is it out now? I didn't do my due diligence to check on that. Is it already out now? No, Can it'll, it it'll be out on father's day. That's what I thought. Okay, that's right. That's Perfect. right. I didn't do it. 
I skipped that part of my homework before you got <laughs> on here today. But no, I know it's going to be fire, man. I can't I can't wait to read it and look at it myself. I'll get Ben to get me a copy. Uh, y'all go to brentcobb.com because I'm sure it'll have every link you need on there to get find it and yeah. uh, all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll get some more inspiration down the road. Have one of them lonely nights out on the prairie and uh, and come up with another 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 gym like that uh, down the road. So uh, so yeah, look forward to getting that. And uh, talking about um oh tour stuff yeah i was gonna ask you about that too while we was talking about the website you can see all your tour dates on there too i know you just announced you're going out uh this fall with nikki lane for a bunch of dates yeah I, i've known nikki for a while we've toured together before man if you know for those who haven't heard her music she's just a unbelievable songwriter she's an entrepreneur she owns her own clothing store and she's just a kind of a boss and she actually she sang on that song soapbox on keep them on their toes with me and uh yeah we're gonna go out on tour me and kendall marvel just wrapped up our first tour since the pandemic it was awesome and uh yeah yeah we're, we got all kind of stuff going yeah, on yeah so you've been out there working know, a little right. bit then yeah we just got well yeah that kendall tour was the first tour back and uh it was acoustic it was a heat open and then i'd play and then we'd get up and do songs we've written for other people and uh man folks just ready to get back out and it was unbelievable and uh and i don't know that i ever want to have a band out there with me again <laughs> well we, first, right, lot, first of all a lot, lot less lot less work. yeah we love kendall uh we need to get kendall on here by the way but uh he's great and i know your your cousin produced uh an album for him was it two, three years ago. Um, that was in, yeah. just yeah. awesome. Country, go- country, absolutely gold. absolutely awesome. Um, I've always loved his his voice. Anytime I write with him, and I get a demo, I'm like, I wish I could just sing it like him. You know, <laughs> he's got such <laughs> a it's a he's very got a, Ron, Ronnie Dunnish. Yeah, he's got a really unique style of singing and great voice you know just a just a super talented guy great guy and um i'm sure that was an awesome awesome tour but uh uh yeah, yeah. He, he he's awesome so yeah that's very cool to hear and glad you're back out there we were, we were just talking last week to jaron from uh tc3 and uh they oh, were that guy. yeah he, he's an animal uh but uh yeah he was uh he was just they were just getting ready to go back and and um because they haven't played yet i mean and we've played i don't know 10 15 shows maybe total or something since but um i was like man it was kind of like riding yeah, he the said bike they played none and he goes our first rehearsal i was awful so <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind, of, kind of funny but i don't know how was it for you man i i was kind of apprehensive and a little bit nervous to go back on stage but it was kind of like i i kind of went at it with going can i still do this and and i walked out there and it was just like a a light switch was was flipped and just like it had always been i and so i'm curious to know kind of how that was for you i don't know how it would have been if i'd have done it if i'd have started back up with the band but but for me starting just sort of like songwriter show acoustically it was amazing right and uh i've you know cultivated enough of a following my fans are very uh they're listening crowd but they also are rowdy they're the rowdiest listening crowd that i think exists they're drinking beer like crazy and having a good time but they're listening too not that that even i don't even care if they ain't listening but they do (laughs) and uh what was cool to me was uh, folks, not they, nobody was on their phones. Everybody you could just tell was just so ready to be amongst other people again and, and seeing music and, and, and enjoying the moment together. It almost felt like what I was talking about earlier, growing up, you know, in the, in the late 80s and the 90s, before cell phones and Facebook and all that stuff, it felt like that again a little bit. It just kind of felt like, everybody's just excited to be together and enjoy a moment together. Yeah. You know? yeah that's a really good yeah. point. JR and I were talking before you came on and I was just saying, uh, 
we played a, a show a couple of weekends ago, a couple of shows, but uh, one of them was really, really good. And, and I was like, man, I didn't even think I was that good. But people were going nuts. And he made exactly. the point, he made the point like, like, kind of like the direction you're, you're going with, man, people are just, re- they don't even care if you mess up. They're just ready to oh. gather and, and, and the, the, you know, having this technology that we're using right now, Zoom, is, is a great tool to have if you have to have it. But there's nothing that competes with human interaction. I mean, we, we, we all need that, you know. Yep. So I, I'm, I'm yep. excited. And I think, um, I think uh, live music, regardless of genre, uh, I think we're all going to have a really good two, three, four years here, um, you yeah, know, big. assuming things continue to progress in a positive way with all this <laughs> stuff, you know. Totally. I completely agree. Yeah, I'm just I'm just glad. I'm glad maybe everybody's getting back on the same page together again, e- yeah. e- even if that page is music. But that's what music's all about yeah. is, is, is that. That's what we're here to do, you know. Yep. And uh, I, I think about all I, – I read your – your interview, you know, with Rolling Stone. And I, I completely agree with you, man. That's, that's what music is for. It's not to divide It's to, if we can't get on no other page together, we can at least enjoy the moment of music. Right. Together, you know? Yeah. No doubt Take about a couple it. Hours it's a, it's sure. a universal language. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, sir. Yep. Yeah. Well, hey, Brent, I know you got a bunch of stuff to do. you in the middle of rights day. And, hell, I got you, your buddy. Oh, there's Tucker, our drummer, te- or calling me. I, I just Ben called me before that. He's down. You know, I live in Gulf Shores now full time. I didn't know that. And be, yeah, my wife and I moved. We After I left Nashville, I did about 10, 12 years there. And then I went to uh, Louisiana, where our wives are from, down to Bayou, home of Louisiana. And then we moved over here about six months before the pandemic and wow. been here ever since. Yeah. So Ben and I guess Ben and his family are down here to, at the Phoenix by the floor of Bama. So I'm going to hook up with him later and uh, cool. catch up with some of those guys. So we got to go on the road in a few days. I know you got to get back at it. So I'm going to let you get out of here. But before I do, I got something we do every week on here and it's uh, the number one song on the day you were born in country music. So like just Justin was born in on three thirty eighty four. And the number one song that week in country music was Alabama's Roll On 18 Wheeler. Ah. I'm a 91179 model, and mine was Conway Twitty, I May Never Get to Heaven. Come on. Uh, does anybody want to take a stab at what the number one song in the country was on August 1st, 1986? It's a doozy, buddy. Uh, hold on. Was it, uh, oh, was it, uh, George Strait? It's close. Dwight Yoakam? Same vein, same group Damn. of badasses. Keith Whitley. Uh, he's from Texas. Still lives in Texas. Damn, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Texas still he, lives in we Texas. Just talk, we just talked to him not too long ago. We were going to Dallas. We talked about stopping that by the, out his ranch. Oh, Didn't have time. Um, uh, Randy Travis. Randy Travis. Uh, on the on other, the other hand, hand. What a, what a, what a, what a smash. On the other hand. We've had. Uh, Brent, you yeah, might take the that's, cake there, buddy. That's pretty strong Damn, right there. That's what's up. Come <laughs> on, man. I, dude, I, I was talking, speaking of Kendall, while we were out there, and we, we'll get off here. Uh, I don't mean to keep y'all. but uh, No, buddy, I don't want to keep you. We're good. We, we were talking about uh, if had Keith Whitley not passed, I wonder how many of them uh, – because he did on the other hand, you know. Yep. And uh, I wonder I wonder how many of them George Strait songs would have been Keith Whitley songs. Yeah. I, th- I honestly – That's a good point. I honestly think that he would have been another George Strait, Alan Jackson, you know, fill in I wonder the if they'd have stood a, if they'd have stood a chance that that joker would have been still living. You know, he'd have got all the yeah. damn songs. Yeah. Yeah, he was – a good point. He was incredible. Yeah, what, he was just he, so good. So good, such a. Do y'all I, have Do y'all have a copy of that uh, that last concert that he did in in uh, in North Carolina? I don't. Uh, is it on YouTube? No, I have it on Dropbox. I'll send it to you. Yes, please, please do. It's it so good. Man. I will get drunk yeah. watching that today. If you have that, that's well. <laughs> it's it's just audio, but I was, you're listening to it. Whatever, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah some, I'll send it sure. to you when we get off the phone. 
Hey, talking talking about being drunk, I got one funny story here. I got to talk about it. It involves songwriters and all that. I'll never forget. It's been a long time ago because, like I said, me and you met a long time ago. But this has been – you were living in Nashville, and I was. Uh, we ran into each other downtown or something. You was with your wife, and you said, hey, man, I just got to tell you, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to go ahead and apologize first. I said, what? He said, man, I, I thought I saw you the other day down some, some bar, and I went up and was talking to you, and I was about half in the bag, and I got to talking to what, who I thought was you. And then I realized a little bit later it wasn't you. And I said, well, who the hell was it? You said, Bobby Pinson. I said, man, come on now. I said, come on now. You know I'm a lot better looking at Bobby Pinson. He got a few oh, years on me, too. I said, come on, bro. I said, you got to put the bottle down, buddy. We got to, you know, we got to oh, change gears or something now. Damn. Anyway, I'll never forget that long as I live, I tell that story. So that was well, pretty fun. I, said, I know just, I'm better looking at Bobby Pinson. so good looking. You know? you just That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. We had the same hat on that day. That's right. That's good uh, stuff. Well, man, Man, that's right. Well, dude, I sure appreciate you spending some time with us today, Brent. Tell everybody we said hello up in Nashville. Y'all go write some hits. Yes, sir. And uh, hopefully we're going to do a show together sooner and later yeah. and uh, and hook up. Yeah, thank y'all very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, Brent, man. Enjoyed it, Really, brother. really enjoyed it, man. Thanks so much and, and spending some time with us. And like JR said, hopefully we'll, we'll get to do some shows together. And, hell, maybe write a song together or something, man. I love it. Awesome. Well, continue. Take care. Continued success and best of luck with the uh, the kids' book. Thanks, sir. See you soon, brother. See y'all. Keep on the toes. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, old buddy. What a great guy. Yep. There it goes. Yeah. Are y'all twins or I what? I mean, is he like your Georgia doppelganger? Yeah, it or was what? almost like he read my bio or something. I mean that. Yeah. yeah and and he and I, I thought we may have met it in passing, which he confirmed. We, but you and I met him once briefly at the studio at your old offices. He, he was, was with writing, Travis one yeah, day but, when, uh, a long man, what time a, ago. What a great yeah. dude, and good to get to know him. And, you know, that's been a, another, I guess, bright spot about this podcast is getting to know some guys like that who I have a ton of respect for, you know, musically, but, but don't know them personally. And having a chance to sit down for, you know, an hour or whatever it's been um, and, and chat, um, you know, next time we see each other somewhere at an event or a concert or something, you know, we'll, we'll have, um, I'm sure, a great conversation. Yeah. So very cool. Very cool to have him. Thanks again yeah. to Brent Cobb. And I, I'm sure he made some fans um, or some fans of his who listen to this, I'm sure, have enjoyed uh, today's podcast for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and I, I was just thinking we also met him at the um, either the Kenny Rogers thing or Charlie Daniels thing at the Bridgestone one time. I remember because I talked to him. I don't know if you ran into him that day. We were all in a big dressing room together. I remember I talked to him and his manager for a minute. But anyway, yeah, thanks to Brent for jumping on and, and keeping it real with us. That was awesome. Um, he, he go, go to brentcobb.com. You can find links to find his book, his music, his tour dates, all that fun stuff, uh, all the stuff he's into. It's it's uh, really cool, cool catching up with him. Yeah, what a nice guy too. And yeah, eerily similar how y'all all you, you and he did the same path to get yeah. everywhere. Hey, well I know we you and I got a ton of stuff we got to get done this week before we go on the road in a few days. So we'll try to keep this short. But I had a few things I wanted to hit on real quick. Um, first was, and this will lead into getting to one big question I had. To, you know, we all got to talk about is uh, this is from actually uh, on Twitter. This is from Ryan Marshall. I actually, no Ryan, one of my fraternity brothers. He's one of Jamie's buddies. Uh, Tank, what's up, Tank? Good question here. Uh, JR, baseball question. Was it a mistake for Van Horn to leave cops in, 118 pitches? But, man, he was crushing it. Or, man, he was cruising. What is, what's your thoughts on the game yesterday, Just? If anybody out there well, listening, y'all had a heartbreaker yesterday. I was, was going to try to not even talk about this, but I'll, I'll address the elephant in the room. We've been the number one team in the country for like three months, and, I mean – we're fully expected to at least make it to the College World Series, if not win it. I mean, we're the favorite to win it. Um, incredibly disappointing uh, that, that we didn't make it. That's baseball, though. Uh, you know, we um, – oh, there's a dark cloud over Arkansas Tough, right I know, now. Buddy. Um, yeah, it, this is one of the – Best baseball teams we've ever had, uh, if not the best. It's one of the top two or three. Um, you know, we were the runner-up in 18. That was a really good team. Van Horn's had some other really good teams. Um, you know, it, to the specific question, was it a mistake to leave him in? 
I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, you could you could look right. and go as soon as he put um, the next guy in, he shut him right down. But he didn't know that was going to happen. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, looking back on it now, you go, yeah. But at the time, Kevin Cobbs has had the most amazing season as a college baseball pitcher in the history of the sport. He had 12 wins wow. going into yesterday and 11 saves, which means he's contributed to a third of our 50 wins. Right. You got to give him a shot. He, you got to let him play as long as he wants to throw. He's the – uh, he's – he won SEC Pitcher of the Year. He's going to win National Pitcher of the Year, and he's probably going to win the Golden Spikes Award, which is the Heisman of college baseball. They right. North Carolina State beat us with our best guy out there. Tip you got to tip your cap Crazy. to him. Hate it, no doubt. You got to tip your cap to yeah. him. That didn't beat us. Um, uh, what beat us is the last couple of weeks. We have not been disciplined at the plate. We're swinging at balls out of the zone, and we're not working counts and driving pitch counts up uh, or didn't. Uh, we lucked out. It seemed like early in the game y'all were. It seems like he kind of got away from it. seemed like early in the game I saw, you know, y'all had a real – getting got a guys on base early. Yeah, we just couldn't get a timely hit. If we'd have had one timely hit to drive in two or three runs, we had – two or three opportunities early in the game to bust the game open and get up 7-1, 8-1, something like that. We couldn't get a hit. So, in my opinion, the reason why we lost this series and this game and we're not going to Omaha is because of our lack of plate discipline. Um, so, you know, you could argue should he have pulled cops there in the uh, – maybe the eighth or ninth, whatever it was, maybe, but – it really was our lack of – I mean, we hit the ball so well. We scored eight runs a game all year, every, every game. That was what we averaged. And we scored uh, five the day before and lost by one, and we scored two yesterday and lost by one. So, I don't the think – The first it, day, 19 or something. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't pitching. It was the hitting or the lack thereof. Right. And, right. And it's not uh, about how many you know, hits – think- It's not about how many hits you get. It's when you get the hits. And we didn't get them at big moments uh, the last two days. Right. That's just bottom line. But at the end of the day, this team was just in, incredible to watch. You know me. I watch pretty much every game. Baseball is my favorite sport. We won 50 games, which I think is the second team at Arkansas to ever do that. That's an incredible accomplishment. I think we went 50 and 13. I mean, which is 50 and 12, some something crazy like that. Yeah. Something. We won the SEC outright. Um, regular season championship we won the sec tournament um sometimes that's just the cruelty of baseball baseball is not like basketball or football alabama is not going to lose um you know because they there's 50 60 kids out there in football who are five stars four stars whatever basketball you got two or three studs you're not going to lose uh baseball you just never know with baseball anybody can beat anybody on any given day and this is the very first series we've ever we've lost this year we won every single series this year except this one so you know it just it is what it's a bummer i hate it for coach van horn um this was a really good opportunity to get his he's i mean he's a hall of famer only thing he's missing is uh is a national championship and everybody thought this was um an opportunity to do so, and it was, and just, uh, you know, tip your cap to North Carolina State. If we got any Wolfpack fans out there, congratulations. I, you know, it sucks, and last night was not fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I congrats. watched the whole game with you, buddy. Yeah, I was feeling for you. I watched the whole game. That's the first whole baseball game I've watched in years. Um, man, and, yeah, I was pulling for you guys. Man, I think I saw a stat during early in the game when it was – when they were talking about since the current format, only one number one seed has went on to – or number one team has went on to win. It was Miami in like 99. 99. That's the like last that, time maybe. the overall number one seeds won it all. It's, it's kind of like a bad yeah. omen or something. But, I mean, that's not – there's that's not real. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is yeah. what it is. But um, 
We didn't. I remember, we, I remember the bottom my, line is we got outplayed. That's it. We just didn't play yeah, well. That's just that's it. Just, I mean, I yeah, hate it, it but you got to be honest. And we we got outplayed. That they yep. beat us with our best guy up there, and we and our, again our pitching was kind of the question mark all year. We gave up two runs, six runs, three runs. You should win all three of those games, at least two of the three. Yeah. Right, Just, right. Yeah, I can remember. I can remember my buddy Eason. Shout out Otis uh, out there. Hope you're doing good, buddy, up in Nashville. Um, I can remember him telling me one time because he, you know, he played college ball and stuff. And it was one year during the World Series, and it was an upset, big time. Like I don't know if it was the Rays or the Diamondbacks beat the Yankees, and it was one team was like the the, you know, the highest paid roster that year, and the, the team that won't end up winning was the lowest and it was out of nowhere and you know low seed came all the way back and he was like it's just better some days to you just own, to be good uh to be hot than it is to be good he said that's baseball like, from what you said any given day anybody puts their stuff together they they well, can win and in, in ironically we we won the first game of the series 21 to 2 um yeah if you could have just saved a couple of those runs for the last game <laughs> but what's crazy about it is as excited as everybody was about that um, what that allowed them to if, – if we'd have won, let's say, five to two, four to two, they thought they were still in the game, they would have pitched some of their bullpen guys and and wouldn't have had them for the rest of the series, which right. shut us down in game two and three. So it actually worked against us that we beat them so badly in game one. There's so many things like that in baseball that people don't really yeah. even know about or understand. It was almost – it would have been better for us to win three to two, four to two, five to two in that game. Right, because then they would have – They had a thrown, wouldn't have had his fresh They arms. would have thrown some yeah. arms that they couldn't have thrown later on. And But it is what it is. We lost the series, and, and um, it's, uh, it's disappointing. But on to the next. Now it's football season, so – that's right. I'm ready for that, too. I'm pumped about that. Saw my boy Julio Jones uh, right up here from Foley, Alabama, just uh, went to the Titans. They're going to be tough this year. Yeah. Uh, I saw the grades. Gross. Well, I, yeah, I know. Uh, I saw I saw the the grades. You know, I think Steelers got a C, Saints got a B minus, B, B, something like that. It was, you know, so, I mean, we're, we're – Nothing crazy yet. I'm sure it'll get heated up as the season gets a little closer. And yeah, college football, dude. We're talking about like two, two and a half months away. Yeah, what, it's uh, it's first game. Late August. So yeah, early September, early September somewhere or something in there. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're getting close. So that'll be good. Hey, talking about uh, wins and losses, I saw some good ones uh, this past Saturday night on the UFC fight. Uh, I actually got the pay per view. The undercard was really good. Um, I can't remember all the guys' names. You don't follow that. There was one real good undercard fight. Uh, they were all good fights. But uh, then in the um, in the UFC uh, main card was, I mean, it was really good. You know, I've only been a UFC guy for the last few years. But, man, it was really some action and some war. I mean, there were some wars. Uh, Paul Craig beat uh, Jamal Hill. Uh, that, I remember watching some of that. Uh, Muhammad beat uh, Mia, Damian Mia, who's like a legend. Uh, and the other guy just chopped him up. The, Mia kept trying to grab him, couldn't ever, couldn't ever get a takedown. And then Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz. I don't know if you saw any pictures on Sports Center or anything yet. So Leon Edwards was strategic as hell. He's just like, I mean, everything was so sharp and crisp. Well, Nate Diaz is like, he's just swag, all swag. He's older. He's been through some wars. He's a cage legend. Dude, so the other guy basically picks Diaz apart the whole time, and it doesn't phase him. And by the end of, like, round one, Diaz got cuts and stuff. They said it looked like I hit by a machete. Dude, it's just drenched. Wow. Ear hanging. I mean, look look like no way he's going to finish. Dude, they went five full rounds, and by the end of the fifth round, had it been about 15 more seconds, Diaz would have won. He caught him real late. And at oh. the – I mean – I've never seen it. I'd rather I'd rather got run over by a truck than look like than fight Nate Diaz. That was crazy. The amount of and he never t he was talking smack the whole time, turning his back, flipping him off. Dude tried to give him a high five. He's like, get out of flipping the bird. I mean, he it, and after the show or after the fight, he just talked to Joe Rogan like everything was fine. And I mean, he's just gashed. It was crazy. But he ended up winning. Uh, no, he lost by decision. Oh, uh, but because he got beat the whole the whole match. But he was just. Basically, like Rocky, like letting him hit him and stuff, trying to figure out what to Rope do. He couldn't beat him with skill. He kind of did, and he almost got him. But God, he was mangled. Um, so that was a that was a wild good fight. Diaz loses no respect or no credibility after that fight. If anything, it only builds the legend. Um, and then uh, 
uh, Figueroa and Moreno fought. Moreno, first born Mexican born uh, UFC champion of all time. That was a great fight. I mean, he just had the young guy. This was a guy. Moreno was a guy who was on the show, the the la, the fighter oh, show yeah, they yeah. had for the UFC. Uh, ultimate. He only made it like uh, one. St- ultimate Ultimate Fighter, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was like the twenty four. He's the lowest guy on the whole roster. Only got on there for a brief second, and they let him go because they didn't see the potential. He's fought his way all the way back. Now he's the world champ. Wow. How cool is Very that? Very cool. And then. Then the uh, the 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 main event of the night was a uh, style bender, uh, Israeli Adesanya versus uh, Vittori, the Italian guy. Dude, style bender is this crazy guy. He's like he's like a half cartoon, half video game, half human man. He, he, he's skinny. He doesn't look like all, but man, he is a wild man. And he just picked this big, just buff uh, Italian guy to pieces the whole time. Just toyed with him. He couldn't do anything with him. Style bender wow. just beat the shit out of him the whole time. Five rounds, just dominated him. Um, admittedly, it was, it was talking, I, I'm not. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I would say admittedly, I, I'm not real familiar with any of these names, or but uh, yeah, it's it's become so huge. I mean, this huge, that sport. Huge. I mean, it's just crazy. I don't know what I don't know what's bigger. I mean, obviously the big stuff like Super Bowl and the, you know the finals on stuff, and but it, they have these every other week, man. There's no, t- I mean, and or at least once a month there's a big card like this, and it, you know it's it's a pay per view. Yeah, see yeah. that was the way boxing was when you and I were growing up, and I used to love. Yeah, my grandfather loved boxing and and watched it, mm-hmm. so I would watch it with him. Mm-hmm. But I've just I don't know I, the 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 brutal nature. Maybe of the UFC, I like. I can't stand to watch somebody break somebody's arm or something. I don't know. It's, there was a there was an arm dislocation this week. It's it's, it's, it's not hard. A, yeah, it's I get hard it. for me to watch. I don't know why. I just I'm just like ah, like if I were in those yeah. fights, I feel like I'd be like I could break your arm right now, but I just can't do it. Like I I, I, I right. don't feel too off. But man, they're they're and most they're of the time they now. you know they don't. Oh yeah, it's a uh, well. It's it's it's. I was a, I was not a big fan for a long time because I remember I remember going out to Vegas and we'd get there and there was a fight at the MGM one time. We were staying there for something and it the, and I was like, oh god, not the UFC the same night I'm here. I don't all because back then everybody was wearing the uh, the Ed Hardy shirts and the bedazzled oh, yeah, jeans. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. thought they were tough yeah. and I was just like, good lord. You know, everybody don't go to a boxing match to act like they can box. Everybody shows up UFC act like they want to fight. And the outfits were ridiculous back then. I, you know, here I come in a cowboy outfit. Affliction. Oh affliction the stuff. Whole. Yeah, affliction. That's it. Yep. That's it. Uh, I was just like, good gracious. No, sorry, anybody out there that wears that and je- bedazzled jeans, but it just, I, I just don't, I can't get in. I can't, I can't jive with that. Um, but I have, and I was the same way, and I like boxing. I always liked boxing. My great grandfather, Grand's dad, uh, loved boxing and stuff. So we used to, I remember watching Mike Tyson with him when I was little and stuff, and then dad, we watched it. But um, so I became, gradually became a fan just because I'd see a few of these guys. Um, like the Chuck Liddells back then and like um, uh, Anderson Silva, those guys. And, man, thought, man, this is – it's not just like grab and fight and, you know, claw each other's eyes out. This is like – you know, this is really a a skill fight. And and then a lot of it came from, you know, last year during pandemic, I went back and watched UFC 1 all the way to like UFC 15 Uh. just because we were at home. Saw Ken Shamrock and all that stuff because, you know, we know we've met Ken and wanted to see that. So I said, let me just start at the very beginning. And uh, it was when they first started. It was no rules. It'd be this three hundred pound guy yeah. versus a little skinny ninja guy versus sumo guy. It was crazy. And watch the evolution. And now watching it, it's not. It's brutal sometimes. But like they're always okay after the fight. It's different. Like boxing, sometimes you can tell they are just out of mm-hmm. it. And I still love boxing. Um, but it, but with UFC, a lot of times it seems like they're okay after the fight. And they're all like high five. And I so I don't know. Maybe I'm a little. Uh, uh, desensitized to it now that I've watched mm-hmm. it some, but I've become I, and it's basically like the stars, you know, just like with some sports. Even if I don't really love the sport, I like the stars in it, and um, watching some of the the characters, you know, it's kind of like wrestling. They, I think that's part of it too. They do WWF better than WWF does WWF these days. Right? Yeah. No. It, Hyping yeah, them up and stuff. And you're you know? right. I mean, there's definite strategy uh, and skill it's behind crazy. it all. It's just. It just looks like a street fight or something. It's crazy. I mean, it's like yeah. you're like, oh, oh yeah. man, dude's bleeding, uh, broken arms. Le-. Like this was years ago. I watched a guy do some kind of kick, and he kicked the guy, and his foot just like went backwards because he broke his foot kicking the guy so hard or some crazy something. I'm like, oh god, 
It's just hard to watch. <laughs> that was one of the fights. I think it was that first fight. Paul Craig, I believe, was the guy, the ju- the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy who did break a guy's arm. And the ref, man, sorry, but that ref should have stopped that fight a long time ago. This guy's arm dangled and flared. And then afterwards, the ref's trying to hold his hand. He's trying to hold his arm in place. He lets go. It's just loose. They, they came on later and said it was just dislocated, but still it looked yeah. brutal. Well, and the ref let it go. I was like, at some point, stop it. And those guys are so tough and tough-minded. I mean, they're not going to tap out. I mean, it's they're just like, I'll just fight Very with rarely. a broken arm or whatever. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's a whole other thing. Well, talking about from from a bunch of tough guys to uh, – to, I don't going to say they're – it's just the way the game has evolved, but uh, NBA is uh, is is it's a flop. Fe- <laughs> Halftime's a flop fest, and boy, they call a lot of fouls these days. I always think, man, if they called that many fouls back when when in in the eighties and nineties when Jordan was hot and stuff, Jordan would have shot fifty free throws a game. Um, he would have anyway, averaged it's, it's about sixty five seventy points. Yeah, because you know no no hand checking and and I mean. Uh, it's crazy, but it is what it is. I almost can't – I was thinking about how I would talk about this because, like, I don't love it, but also if you're the players, that's kind of what you have to learn to talk. But we were taught if somebody runs into you, you know you hold your ground. Now they bump shoulders and they hit the ground. I'm like, that didn't really cause you to hit flop down. Yeah, it, but it's like this instinct now, as soon as they bump, they know how to instantly go to their butt and fall down. I didn't ever see that many people falling down back then. No, you just didn't fall down it like It would have – Back then, I mean, it would have shown weakness is the way it, we were That's we what were I'm coached. saying. You would have took it. You were like, I, I, yeah. I'm going to be tough. And, you know, because yeah. you would have gotten yelled at by your coaches or your dad or <laughs> whoever, you know. Yeah, hold your ground and but stuff. But now it's, it's kind of like they're world. trained to take it. If it's a little – if it's a graze, they fall. And I'll see some, too, and they'll foul a guy. And when they do it on slow motion, it takes three seconds, it seems like, before the guy, oh, then his head flips back. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm like, surely the ref has to notice that, but they don't. They and don't what, ever call what, it. But it's been – And whether you're a LeBron fan or not, he's the absolute worst. He's, he's great. Worst, I mean, he's yeah. really they, good player. I, don't get me yeah. wrong. That's an understatement. But he is the absolute worst. He'll act like – he know. he'll act like he's in a UFC fight, getting just blistered. Oh yeah, they all do. And That's what's like, dude. Really? I don't even know if he's Come the worst, on, man. Like, really. <sighs> I know, and it's like you know a lot of these guys are super tough, but that's just – I mean, only a handful don't. I ain't never really seen Steven Adams flop a lot. But uh, a lot, most everybody knows how to take that bump where you're going up and you hit – it's crazy. But it's still exciting. I still love basketball. It is what it is. Um, Philly and Atlanta. Uh, Brooklyn and Milwaukee got it tied up. Phoenix, our boy um, Chris Paul's moving on. They knocked off Denver, the Joker, like you said, without Jamal um, – with uh, Jamal Murray, they they just didn't have enough heat, man. He was, you know, triple doubles. And I saw one stat, he had like 30, 20, and 10. 30 points, over 30 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists. He was one of only he like three so players good, ever, man. like him and like him and Kareem and Wilt. Hopefully he'll come yeah, back so he, They're out. Yeah. I, I, if, if so, I, they've got – I mean, that's the weapon they need. They just need that – you got to have that extra firepower. Oh, you know, no just doubt. Nowadays with all m- multiple stars on each team. Um, and then the Clipper and the Jazz, um, that's going to be in a good. That's going to be a good series for sure. But yeah, that's all I got on that. Um, and then I know our Braves are rocking on along, middle of the season, still holding down. I saw they beat the Mets the other day, um, about 30, 32 and thirty three record, something like that, holding holding strong. Um, that's really all I got for sports today, Just. You got anything? What's up with the with the uh, with the girls' sports and stuff? What's how's that going? Y'all got games this past weekend or this coming weekend? No, this past weekend we we didn't. It was supposed to be district, but it got canceled for some reason. But uh, Ella's team plays in the state tournament this coming weekend, and and that's kind of the last hoorah for the season. And then uh, so hopefully we'll play well. I think there's like 19, 20 teams, so it's going to be tough sledding. Um, but it'll be good experience regardless. And then we're heading down to uh, the beach, man. We're we're coming your direction yes. here soon. You know, we had uh, yes. you mentioned earlier briefly South's birthday the other day. We took him to a, a a museum here close to home, and he's as you know uh, he's obsessed with dinosaurs. So um, oh, they yeah. have a little like an outdoor kind of dinosaur. I don't know if I'd call it an, an exhibit, but. For for a four year old, it it was pretty impressive, you know. So um, yeah. so we took him over there, went and got some something to eat, and 
hung out around the house and uh, had a pool party the other day. Um, Fun. And then uh, I, I grilled out. I made some steaks and some roasted vegetables and roasted potatoes. It was really good. And um, that's about it, man. Just uh, Just getting ready here in about... I don't know, a week and a half, something like that, to uh, to head south. So looking forward to that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know I talked to Kate a little bit the other day about trying to get all our plans and scheduling for all that stuff um, figured out. So we got a few little things tightened up. It sounds like y'all y'all got it about mapped out. Y'all got some guests lined up to come stay with y'all and hang out and stuff. So that'll be a fun trip. Yep. Um, and then we've got a few shows due before then. I wanted to uh, – definitely get those in there i don't know i know some of them are radio shows i don't know how much we could even talk about all those um i know we're going to tulsa this week i don't know if i can say that or not but we're playing in tulsa on the 17th the day this airs yep. um we'll be in tulsa acoustic, at the I casino believe. out there doing yep acoustic doing thing for the radio um then we've got a thing next week i know i can talk about these because i've i've I know this one, you can actually get tickets to it. And I want to put something out there, too. We're actually playing the 24th. That'll be um, not this Thursday, the, the day this airs, but the following week, the 24th of June. We're playing in St. Louis, Missouri at the Pagan, which is an old school, uh, big club there. It's been around for a long time. Everybody's ever been, anybody's played the Pagan at some point. But we're playing there on the 24th, a Thursday night. And um, we're going to give away some tickets to that. I got a pair of tickets. I want to give away that to some listener. So um, I figure what we'll do is y'all go to Instagram, uh, the Instagram page for the Justin Moore podcast, and go on there, like and, uh, the Instagram page, follow the Instagram page, I guess you'd say, and then DM us a message if you're going to be in the area, and I'll give everybody a shout-out who who put something up there, and I'll pick somebody out of the block to uh, to go to the show and let me know why you need to go to the show and want to go to the show and all that stuff. So if you're in the St. Louis area on the 24th and want to go to the show on the Pagan, go to the Justin Moore podcast Instagram and follow and send a message uh, using the hashtag Justin Moore podcast and let us know uh, you need a pair of tickets, and I'll hook somebody up um, for that show. And then the next day we're going to play uh, a county fair up in Martinsville, Indiana, out the Indiana outside of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, that'll be fun. Looking forward to that big full show at a fair, uh, big crowd. Um, that'll be, a, I guess, our first real full band show um, of that run, because then the next night we've got a private show for actually a friend of your dad's we're going to go do. Uh, and then we've got our break for the, for the 4th of July block, and then we'll come back after that and do Independence, Iowa, Fort LaRamie, Ohio, the country concert on July 9th, uh, and then Bay City, Michigan on July 10th. So that's what we've got coming up. You can go to justinmoremusic.com uh, on Justin's website there and get all the uh, info on tickets, uh, dates, times, uh, and, and dates on past uh, the 1st of July. But that's what we've got coming up here soon. So y'all check that out. Uh, and like Brent and Justin were talking earlier about Justin's new album, if for some strange reason you haven't downloaded Straight Out of the Country already, uh, go ahead and do that now. You won't be disappointed. Uh, you can find links to that on Justin's website as well. Uh, merchandise. I know I've been in contact with our merchandise manager and uh, and our merchandise manufacturer about some new shirts and new stuff coming out. I know you've seen some of that. We got a new sick hat coming. Yeah, out we got a cool point. new camo so, hat coming out, which is awesome. If it didn't, if it didn't have my name or my insignia, I would love to wear it. But I kind of feel like that might be a little douchey. Yeah, but maybe not. I'll wear it. Hell, I'm wearing my. Oh, own, hell, wearing well, my maybe own shirt you're today. doing it. Maybe I can do it. I don't know. Maybe it's you not. Know. I don't know. You know, I mean, this, what 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 is what is now? What is what is now? Who knows? After last year, who knows? Yeah. So hey, and uh, if, after you go on Justin's website and buy you a, a, a Justin Moore podcast T-shirt, send me a picture of you wearing that, and uh, I'll definitely give you a shout out and use your picture and clip it on the YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff if y'all want it. If y'all do that, uh, remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast too. But after you leave there, you can go to jrthehandler.com and I've got shirts in. I love uh, that shirt too. So y'all check. I know, uh, and I'm working on getting us some belt buckles. I talked to my buddy, shout out to Rusty, got got that in the works for us. But, uh, yeah, y'all go check that out and uh, go to subscribe, like, subscribe, rate, uh, five-star notification, follow, all that fun stuff, uh, anywhere you find the Justin Moore podcast because, as we say every week, all that stuff helps. We don't really know why, but it definitely does. So y'all do that. 
Um, yeah, and I know we, we took a break earlier for our sponsors, and we've, we've actually uh, got some great sponsors. We've actually talked with some new sponsors, but I also thought it might be worth mentioning, if anybody out there listening has a company that would like to advertise on or be partnering with the Justin Moore podcast, we've still got some room to do some stuff as we expand and now that we're figuring this thing out. So shoot me a message uh, on uh, jrthehandler.com um, uh, chat form there uh, through my website and uh, I'll get you in touch with the right people if you if you work for a company if you own a company and you'd like to see about maybe adv- advertising with us for a couple of episodes or the whole season or being a coming to full-time sponsor any of that uh, I can put you in touch with the right people um, next week we've got uh, well actually next time I don't know we're, we're gonna try to put one out next week just we're gonna we're gonna be break we're gonna have to take a break because I know we're gonna be both traveling a bunch um, so we might have to take a week or two off well, we but are. I'll keep everybody um, updated. On. We are recording uh, a couple of days from now. One that we could we could use next week also, uh, with a legend. Yeah, may do that. A yes. legend in country yes. music. Well, I'll just leave it at that. We'll tease yes. you with that, but maybe we'll put that out next week. We're doing that in a couple of days, and uh, we were gonna maybe save that one, but maybe we we put that out next week. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll just do that. Yeah, and then we'll take a week off for the fourth and come back the next week. And I'm uh, supposed to talk with Carly Pierce uh, that following week. Yep. So that'll be cool. And then um, and then at some point, uh, I know we want to get our brother Dallas Moore on. We're going to do that show with him. I was going to try to get it before then, but we may do it after that. Um, really, only things I've got left here, just is I want to give a shout-out um, – to uh, our buddy Sam Bell, who listens to the show. Um, truck looking good. That's that black square body he's been nice. sending his pictures on. Looks good, Sam. Um, let's see what I got here. Oh, our buddy Craig Campbell's got a new song coming out. Uh, Would have been this past Monday, 614. We need to get Never Craig Mind. on here, too. Y'all check that out. Yes, we do. Um, the Oak Ridge Boys' new album just came out. Uh, Front Porch Singing. Man, you, I mean, what do you, it's just it's like when we met them. It's just them four just still crushing it. Uh, so y'all check that out. Um, that'll be cool. Um, what else do I have? Oh, and talking about podcasts and other stuff, I actually was uh, honored to get to go be on a few podcasts a few weeks ago, and they're out on all platforms now. So if y'all want to check that out during the break, um, you can go, if you want to hear me just ramble for a while with some with some buddies talking about music, uh, you can go check out the Climb the Ladder podcast. You can find that on any platform. That's Climb the Ladder podcast. Um, I was at episode 50 uh, with my buddies, the twins from Idaho, Duncan and Hunter. Want to give a shout out to Duncan. He uh, just got married this past weekend, so congrats to him and his his wife, um, now wife. Um, that's episode 50 of Climb the Ladder podcast. Also, episode 50. I guess I'm the 50. I'm the episode 50 special. Uh, also on the episode 50 of the Every Playlist Tells a Story podcast with my buddies Todd and Jimmy who Todd, um, that we know from the, our promoter rep world. Yeah, that's a fun and one. Jimmy actu- yeah, and Jimmy actually um, was our building contact at our Evansville, Indiana show. I got to talk to him that day. I, I didn't get to put you all together, but I talked to Jimmy that day. We did settlement and all that. It was, it was fun catching up with him. So um, if you get bored and want to just hear me ramble, you can go to Climb the Ladder podcast or Every Playlist Tells a Story podcast, both episodes 50. I'm on there. Uh, check that out. Um, really about all I got for this week, Just. I know it's Father's Day. I want to say happy early Father's Day to you. Is it this and weekend? all the great dads out there. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. It's this weekend. I didn't even know. Well, happy yep, it's, uh, early Sunday Father's Day to everybody. 20th. That's right. Yeah, the 20th. So, hey, yeah, reminder out there, any of our lady listeners or uh, kiddos <laughs> yeah. or teenagers, anybody listening, make sure to get your dad something. Everybody gets mom something cool. Everybody pitches in and figures out something cool to get mom don't forget about the good dads out there there you go and if your dad's just an old drunk just get him a beer hell everything will be all right <laughs> get him we some all bush gotta latte. get through this thing somehow that's right <laughs> got to get through this thing any way we can man from old jr the handler i just want to say i appreciate everybody tuning in each and every week you know y'all are what makes this justin moore podcast happen and uh, couldn't do it without y'all so thank y'all and thanks to all of our great guests brent cobb appreciate your time today brother uh jared johnston from last from tc3 last week thank you for jumping on uh enjoyed them all enjoyed catching up with you some just i know we don't get to do as much as we uh we used to but we're about to get out that train it's rolling again it's coming and uh that's right and now, and I just got a text from Brent, so I've got that Keith Whitley um, concert to listen to. I'll save it for us to get to listen to together. Heck yeah, yeah! Thanks to Brent and thanks to so. Jaron again from last week. But uh, a lot of fun with Brent Cobb today. Go check out his uh, all his stuff at, at his website. Uh, new book coming out, kids' book coming out. He's got a ton of great music out there, and just um, 
great to get to know him a little better today. I know you guys are buddies, but uh, maybe um, uh, are a lot of fun to get to know him a little better personally. But uh, enjoyed it, as always. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week right here with a legend, maybe, uh, on the Justin Moore Podcast. We'll Thanks, everybody. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 10, never let it go. For the revelation awaits the appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. I am an impatient person when it comes to getting work finished, but there are times when it's necessary to be patient and put an unfinished project aside and let nature take its course. The old adage, an idea whose time has come, is not only a truism, but very applicable to my creative process. I have held bits and pieces of songs in my head for as long as 14 years, never able to put them together until one day, A new thought pops. I pull out the old snatches of melody or lyric, and bingo, you've got a thing happening. I have learned never to discard any good idea. No matter how brief or disjointed it may seem at the time, there will always be a place at some time in the future for a truly good idea. I was sitting on the city bus in El Paso, Texas, 1962, and had an idea for a song about a Mexican bandit, Pancho Villa. I liked the idea a lot, but could never get past the first couple of verses. In 1976, I began a song about Billy the Kid. I pulled out the verses I had written 14 years before about Pancho Villa, made a few adjustments, and holla, a new song was born. Hold on to your dreams, your solid ideas, and be on the lookout for the right time to bring them to fruition. Let's all make the day count. Let's all make the day count.